All right, here is this wonderful question. Uh, now this question is from Convergency and not, not a really kind of asked around question. This question is question number 92 from the revision session of Oxford uh, General Navigation. Now this question is a little bit tricky as far as the, the meaning of the question is concerned. You need to have a bit of uh, basic knowledge to kind of interpret through this particular question. So today I'm right here with this video. Uh, I kind of ignore this question a bit because I do make my students do it in the class, but uh, making making a public video, I kind of miss this question. Uh, but here it comes from a student of mine who kind of pointed out that so, so this is one of the questions which you could discuss. As I said, not very likely for an exam, but it's quite interesting to discuss this. You might have a different way around if you if you're solving the question in a different way. Do let me know, and I'll be definitely happy to see and learn it. All right. So uh, let's uh, dig into the question uh, straight. Which of the following differences in latitude will give the biggest difference in the initial great circle track and the main great circle track between two points separated by 10 degrees change of longitude? It's quite a lengthy question, and you have four options given. All right. So. Uh, this question, as I said, needs a couple of basic ideas to be put together, right? So if you are kind of completely fresh to convergency, I probably would recommend you to kind of skip this video, go back, get some get some homework done, and then uh, watch the video. But I'll try to make it as basic as possible, uh, just that I don't want the video to be infinitely uh, long, all right? Yes, so... Um, yeah, so uh, let's let's see what the question has for us. All right, they're asking us which of the following differences in latitude will give the biggest difference in the initial great circle track and the mean great circle track between two points separated by 10 degrees of Chilong. So we have two different points separated by 10 degrees. It could be any, any of the Chilong right and we need to find out the difference between the initial great circle track and the mean great circle track between those two points and they are trying to tell us which of these differences in the latitudes given in the options a b c and d can actually give us the biggest of the difference between the initial great circle track and the and the mean great circle track all right so let's dig into this question now uh, just to give you a small heads up Generally, I don't introduce the concept of Lambert's projection in convergency, but uh, it, it is a Lambert's projection. We generally tend, I generally tend to teach it using Lambert's projection. Now, you can also see instructors, you can also see textbooks talking it with respect to uh, the, the Mercator projection, which is not wrong. I'm just trying to be more, more um, closer to the, uh, to the Earth. Where the, where the meridians do converge, all right? And so does on a Lambert's projection. So let's draw two meridians here. Number one, and number two. Now I, I, I kind of, I just, I'm just taking two different. Uh, I'm just assuming it to be the northern hemisphere. Now this is not directly connected to the question right now. I'm just giving you some basic concepts. We'll come back to the question in a moment, right? Northern hemisphere, and then this is the equator over here. Now you can see the meridians kind of converge towards the uh, north pole. Or oh, just, just pardon me, it's the north pole here. Sorry. All right, yes. Now, if I take a point here, point P. All right. And if I take a point Q, say here. Right. And I am traveling from P to Q. So it's from P towards Q. All right. So my track is from P to Q. This is my track. And this is definitely on a Lambert's projection, we know that great circles are near straight lines. And if uh, don't worry, as I said, if you're not really sure with projections and charts, uh, you can completely ignore that. You can just understand that if you draw a straight line on a Lambert's chart, it is assumed to be a near straight line. Uh, so, sorry, it's assumed to be straight line because it is actually a near straight line. All right. So here, this is the great circle track from P to Q. Great circle track. You know what great circle track is. It's the shortest track between two different points on the surface of the Earth. All right. And uh, this is point Q. So great circle track from P to Q. And generally, this is what I do. I tend to write the from point first, from for first, and then the two point next. So it's great circle track from P to Q. All right. Now, let me just quickly get rid of these uh, angles here all right perfect now let me draw the rump line track and we know that rump line track on a Lambert projection kind of curves towards the 
uh, equator convex to the equator and concave to the poles the nearest pole all right so let's draw the uh, great circle track all the way up here this is the great circle track from p to q all right now we know that a rhomb line track from p to q is convex to equator and concave to the nearer pole all right so it's going to kind of bulge towards the equator perfect this is because you have taken a Lambert's projection, Mercator projection, it's just the opposite. All right, so here, this is the rump line track. And this is the great circle track. Perfect. Now, why have we drawn this as, uh, let me assume this meridian, uh, the longitude or the, of the meridian over here to be, say, for example, uh, say 10 degrees east, and this to be, say, 20 degrees east. So practically, I have taken two meridians of Chilong, 10 degrees as given in the question right now let me consider uh, what they have asked initially is the initial great circle track and that's exactly what i have drawn here this is the initial great circle track from p to q that is great circle track as i said from p p comes first and then q again this is just my way of representing it there are people who write gcp q p and they read like q uh, from p so it doesn't matter as long as you know which is from for you it's completely all right. So this is the initial great circle track. I'll just put here uh, I, initial great circle track from P to Q. Now let's see what the mean great circle track is. To find the main great, great circle track, we have to find the mean meridian, correct? So let's find out the mean meridian. 10 degrees east and you have 20 degrees east. Obviously the mean meridian is going to be 15 degrees east and that's going to come straight here, right? This is 15 degrees east. All right, perfect. Now, what they mean by the mean rate circle track is nothing but this particular track here. And we know track is always measured from local meridian clockwise. That's exactly what I've marked here. Now, this is the mean grade circle track from P to Q. Again, all right. Yes. And what you need to understand here is that the mean grade circle track between any two points is equal to the rump line track. Now, uh, don't take my me uh, granted. Let's let's kind of just prove this here. All right. You can see here that what is the direction of the rump line track at along this mean meridian? If I let it loose, it's gonna go straight like this. This is the track. All right. And uh, you can see how the great circle track is here over. That's exactly going in the same direction. So you can kind of see the parallel. All right, we can mathematically prove this, but at this moment, I'm not really going into that. So by saying the mean rate circle track, what they mean is nothing but the rump line track. Okay, and we know rump line track is going to be constant, right? The rump line track over here, that is from P to Q, rump line track at Q, and rump line track over here, it's all the same. That is why it's called as rump line track. They cut the meridians at equal angles. All right, so by saying the biggest difference in initial rate circle track and mean rate circle track, what they mean is the biggest difference in initial rate circle track and the rump line track. Now this, once you get this idea, now the question is very, very simple. Now let's let's do this step by step. All the way, let me just quickly take this particular statement just to make it a bit easier and kind of, kind of paste it here. So what they're asking the question is nothing but the biggest difference in the initial rate circle track and the mean rate circle track. All right now this is nothing but the biggest difference in the initial great circle track and the rump line track so let's put it up here All right sorry oops rump line track All right now what is the difference between great circle track and a rump line track now let's bring this back here as i said even though we are referring to rump line track here because we are referring to the great circle track here if I, if, I, if I know what the rump line track over here at the mid meridian is, that's exactly going to be the same value here because it's a rump line track. It doesn't change the, the track value. All right. And basically what we are trying to find out is the difference between the initial great circle track, which is here, and the rump line track, which is here. And we know that the difference between great circle track and rump line track at a particular point, remember that line, at a particular point, is what we call as the conversion angle right so what they are kind of asking here is nothing but the biggest difference in initial great circle track so difference in initial great circle track and the rump line track is nothing but conversion angle so they are kind of asking here nothing but the biggest conversion angle 
out of the four options, which of them have the biggest conversion angle if you tend to draw a grid circle track and drum line track between any two points along those latitudes. All right. So the biggest conversion angle is nothing. But what is conversion angle? Now, conversion angle, as it says, it is used to convert a grid circle drum line and drum line to grid circle at a particular point. Right. And we know that conversion angle is nothing but half of convergency. All right. Perfect. Now let's come to the equation for convergency. So you know where I'm going now, right? Let's dig into the equation of convergency here. So we know that, let me put this equation straight here. Now, just like the previous video, which I've done on departure, this is one of those equations, which you really have to be a bit careful, especially if you're in the preliminary stages, because departure and convergency, they are very, very consecutive chapters. And uh, the structure of departure equation and the convergency equation is pretty much similar with some major differences. You need to pick up the major differences. Number one, in case of departure, we have the chillong in minutes, all right? And in case of convergency, it is, it is chillong again, which is change in longitude, but this time it is in degrees because it has nothing to do with distance. And a departure has to do with distance. That is why we have this minute and uh, nautical mile relationship. Here it's on degrees because it's angle. All right. So Chilong in degrees times. The next uh, major difference between departure and convergency now, you must have definitely come, uh, got a hint, hint of it. Uh, in case of departure, it is proportional to the cosine of the particular latitude. Uh, in case of convergency, it's the sine of the uh, mean latitude. Now, that's the difference here. Okay, I'm not going to uh, explain about convergency equation at the moment. I am kind of planning to make a video on a general question from convergency and from departure, uh, just to make, give you an idea about uh, what about the about the uh, the parameters of this particular uh, equation. So as of now, I'll just kind of box it here because we need to use this equation right now over here. All right. Now, uh, conversion angle is half of convergency. So we are trying to find out. So I'll write for biggest, I'll write B. So biggest conversion angle is equal to half of convergency, half of the biggest convergency. Right. So which means if, you, if I can find the, uh, the, the, the latitudes, which can give me the biggest convergency, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm finding the biggest conversion angle. And therefore I'm finding the biggest difference between the initial rate circle track and the rump line track. All right, perfect. So let's see which of these, how to find out the biggest, uh, the largest of the convergency. So convergency will be greater if Chilong is greater or if sine of mean latitude is greater. But in this particular question, they have kind of fixed the Chilong to be 10 degrees. So now the Chilong is constant, therefore convergency is going to be independent of that, right? So convergency is kind of proportional only to sine of mean of latitude here, which means if you can find uh, the mean latitude where the sine value of which is going to be higher, uh, that's going to give me the highest convergency and therefore highest conversion angle. All right, I hope you are catching up with me. I'm going a little bit fast because I don't want the video to be too long, uh, just like the previous. A previous video all right perfect now if you are there with me let's now see I, I need to find out the latitudes which can give me the highest convergency which means I'm trying to find out the latitudes which can give me the highest sign value now let's come back to uh, trigonometry now if you have questions on trigonometry do let me know my Instagram link is right there uh, on the video as well as in the description uh, if not, just go back to my previous video on departure. I have very briefly explained sine, cos and tan theta with the help of a right angle triangle. So if you take the trigonometric function sine theta, sine 0 is going to be 0 and sine 90 is going to be 1, right? These are the basic values which you have to know. Uh, very, very basic values. Don't worry, you don't have to buy hard. If you're confused, just take your scientific, the, your scientific calculator and then just kind of uh, find it. Sine 0 is 0, sine 90 is 1. Now, what is this telling us is that when the value of the angle is least, sine of that angle is the lowest. When the value of the angle is higher, greater, the sine of the value is actually more. Or sine increases, the sine of an angle increases with the angle. Perfect. All right. So, when I say that I need the highest value for sine of mean latitude, I'm looking at the highest value of the mean latitude. Now that's it. That's it all about this particular question. Let's let me just quickly take up these options down here because we need to find out the mean of these latitudes. Now what they have given here is 
different latitudes uh, 60 north 60 south 60 north 60 north and you can you, can, you know the latitudes given here all right what are we trying to find out here is the the highest mean of these latitudes let's take the first option option alpha here the mean of 60 north and 60 south is the equator don't ask me why no if, you, if you're confused i'm just drawing an earth here very very small a uh, simple earth uh, 60 degrees north is here and 60 degrees south is here the mean of that is the, is the average and that's going to be the equator if you're still confused you can just write 60 north and 60 south so 60 minus 60 divided by 2 and that's going to give you the equator all right now 60 north and 60 north the mean is going to be 60 north right now 30 south 30 north is exactly like 60 north 60 south and therefore it's again going to be equator uh, which is which is nothing but zero north or zero north zero south doesn't matter north south it's same and 30 south 25 south the mean is going to be 27.5 south it says 30 plus 25 divided by uh, divided by 2 all right perfect so now i'm trying to find out which of these has given me the highest mean latitude now you can see here uh, where 60 north and 60 north has given me the largest mean latitude of 60 north all right whereas 60 north 60 south 30 south 30 north has all given me zero which is not the highest and then 30 south 25 south is 27.5 therefore the highest is 60 north uh, which is between 60 north and 60 north therefore 60 north which means any great any two points between now uh, within the 60 north parallel of latitude if you draw a great circle and a rump line that is going to give you the biggest difference between the initial great circle track and the rump line track now to understand this better let's go back just go exactly the reverse of what we have just done right this question is kind of exciting because it's it's framed in a very very good way so you really have to have a good conceptual idea and a different way of visualization to get this question done all right so perfect so here we have 60 north 60 north giving us the largest mean latitude now what does largest mean latitude mean largest uh, the greatest value for sine of mean latitude and now what does that mean when you have the highest value for sine of mean latitude you have the greatest of convergency because convergency depends upon uh, sine of mean latitude now one once you have once you have found out the largest convergency half of that is going to give you the biggest of the conversion angle right and biggest of the conversion angle is what they have indirectly asked you in the question as the biggest difference in the initial rate circle track and the rump line track in the question they have just modified it again further by asking you or by putting rump line track as a mean great circle track so remember one thing uh, if you draw a great circle track and rump line track and if when you, when you learn about lambert's projection you'll also learn that a straight line track so if you draw a great circle track rump line track and straight line track between two points then the uh, the gray circle track rump line track and straight line track is going to be one and the same along the mean meridian all right that is why we say mean gray circle track is nothing but rump line track so you can see how they have framed the question up they have just asked you uh, which of these latitude is going to give you the largest of the conversion angles all right perfect i hope you understood this question as i said this question is quite interesting pretty much interesting to teach because whenever i've put this question up to my students they kind of get a bit confused and horrified because it's such a long statement the only values in the question is 10 degrees too long and they have some series of uh, lat longs perfect as i said this is from the oxford quest, um, uh, revision question papers not really um, seen in the exams as such but it's definitely good to learn all right thanks a lot for uh, the suggestion because i kind of pick up questions from what you suggest to me all right uh, go to this question if you have uh, questions definitely dm me i have my instagram uh, link for you right down here as well as it will appear on the video down here all right if you're completely happy with this particular question i'm definitely glad and do check out my other videos as well i've kind of tried to explain some of the simpler concepts as much as possible within the limited time uh, frame all right i'll see you with yet another beautiful question keep learning and see you in the next video Bye bye